I think it was through Twitter, honestly. Um, it was through Twitter. I think I got it like on my trending um, page when you go on Twitter and it says, right. well, first case confirmed. And I think it was like some city, not in Seattle, but like an hour away from Seattle mm -hmm. that confirmed it. And then I was like, okay, well, that's kind of like, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was just some isolated case, but then as the days went on and the numbers kept doubling, uh, it became a little concerning. And then when we first heard about the cases in King County, which is where Seattle is, I think folks were a little um, fearful once we started hearing that there were more cases in Seattle. I haven't really been outside much lately. I've mostly been indoors and kind of overusing social media. It's become a crutch for human interaction that I would have had outside of my family. When the news of coronavirus became more and more serious, my thoughts led to a friend of mine who's studying in Seattle, which is where some of the first cases of people dying from coronavirus happened. I wanted to see how she was holding up and get some insight on how social media has impacted her. So I'm just going to start off by asking you to say a little bit about yourself, like what you're studying, okay. and kind of like a little bit about you. Cool. My name is Saida. I am a MPH student um, attending University of Washington um, in the Department of Global Health. I'm a first year grad student in Seattle where um, some of the earlier cases actually happened. And so we got to experience a little bit of the, um, I guess, fear and lockdown uh, first in the nation. Um, and also as a student, I feel like there's a lot of sensory overload because you you, you're also online receiving information and then you're also online like in class 24 seven. Being a student during this time is tough. I'm juggling online work, classes, internships and it's just hard to stay focused on that when there's a pandemic and it's everywhere you look and especially because it's so busy and crazy using social media is easy and convenient but it's hard to know that everything that you're looking at is 100 percent accurate for me it's really easy to sift through like what is legit and what is not legit right so i can easily easily spot out like people who are just saying things just to say it and then people who are actually like studying this disease as it goes every single day. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I honestly just pay attention to those folks and see what they're saying, um, mainly just because they're colleagues and they're people who I know who are part of these um, studies. With public health, it, it's really multidisciplinary and it takes into account not just like the health side of things, it also takes into account like social context and political context. So I've seen a lot of videos where like Chinese officials and people like clear, like cleaning the streets and like, I don't know, like disinfecting it. But then if you look at all of China, you know, in some areas that are like disproportionately impacted by this, some people aren't getting that help. And sometimes within Twitter, people don't take into account those things as well. Like you only get a one-sided view of how other countries are handling things. Right. Not saying that America's handling this well because America is not. Mm -hmm. Um, with Twitter, there's a lot of layers to things that people um, overlook. Sometimes, unplugging from social media and news seems like a better idea when being in tune to everything that's going on just leads to misinformation and stress. Is it really worth it? I'm really hopeful with social media as well, like uh, with this um, with this outbreak, there's been a lot of attention. How everything that's happening is really disproportionately impacting poor people, homeless people, people who are considered essential workers but aren't like paid, you know, well. Um, so I've seen a lot of like communal collective action happening, people having mutual aid set up to support like artists um, or families struggling with homelessness or families that may be um, evicted. I've seen people calling for like rent moratoriums to halt all rents. So I, I think with this, it's been, there's been a lot of communalism that I've seen um, coming about from this and people grocery shopping for elders who um, are unable to leave their homes. So I think it can bring about um, 
like some true communal change I feel like this country has been lacking because it's such a with capitalism it's such a huge individualistic country right. where folks only think about themselves but um, I think yeah folks have really uh, I feel like been trying hard to rally for folks who have been laid off or essential workers that still have to commute it's going to be interesting I yeah I don't know if true change will come about once this is over or if people will just resume to their normal lives from before 